Well, good morning, folks. As those who have the Disaster Prediction app know, the sun is awake, and we've been getting solar flares. Yesterday, we noted the development of the northern departing sunspot group, but it went to another level with major development and a replacement of the lead umbra. The new growth overcame the old one. The first solar flare erupted late yesterday and was utterly spectacular to watch on SDO. The grouping was visibly getting active in the hours leading up to the flare, Both the flash of the flare and the ejected plasma, the CME, are easily visible, along with how the ejection ripples the coronal fields and plasma population, blasted out from the point of the flare. It produced a level 1 radio blackout over the sunlit side of Earth at the time. I'm sure Pacific Command high-frequency communications were degraded slightly. Luckily, we can be pretty sure the eruption will not hit Earth. It is clearly heading up and away, but could electrically couple with the Earth early this week. Same goes for what happened this morning. A larger but shorter-lived and less phenomenal solar flare erupted around 800 UTC. This one hit M5 and produced a brief level 2 radio blackout. We can also determine easily from watching these frames that the ejection was less intense from the second event, likely due to its shorter duration, and luckily this one also does not appear to have sent anything scary in Earth's direction. You can see the radio blackout here for the second one, over the western Indian Ocean. When we step back and look at the last 24 hours on our star, it is just the solar flares that capture one's attention. Plasma filaments and coronal hole presence is diminished. FYI, the quake watch from those bursts peaks Monday through early Wednesday. Here is what the X-ray charts look like. You can see the two solar flare events on there looking like peaks and mountains. Let's peek in on the sunspots. Starting with the flare maker on the north, we find countless umbra in a magnetically complex setup. I wouldn't rule out more flaring, but then again, it's turning away. While the southern group behind it is simpler, it does have two magnetic interaction points that are delta class or have strong delta potential. Have to watch that one and also need to monitor the new sunspot group incoming from the left over at the eastern limb. Top articles today begin with a fascinating yet perplexing gap in the radius of rocky exoplanets. Turns out we see a lot of them smaller than one and a half times Earth size. We see a lot of them more than twice Earth size. But that window between 1.5 and 2 Earth radii represent a gap where almost no exoplanets exist at that size. We also have a much more imaginative read from Dr. Lund at Vanderbilt discussing whether or not scientists' new scope would allow them to detect a communication from intelligent life deep in the cosmos. Our top weather event to discuss happened in Colombia. Torrential rains caused flash floods just moments before the river overflowed and an avalanche of water and mud and rocks came crashing into the town in the dead of night. There are well over a hundred dead, hundreds of homes lost, and a dire situation for the people left trying to clean up their lives. Make sure you stick around for the wind map. Lots of alerts upcoming, especially for the central United States tonight. Yesterday's members podcast, Fly on the Wall, was so much fun to record. We had eight incredible electric stories and broke down what to take away and what might be best left ignored. Went over the hour mark once again. We're hoping for a quiet day today, but when those CMEs couple this week, could be rough with Jupiter in alignment as well. All space weather alerts are coming through the Disaster Prediction app available for Apple and Android. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.